Good morning. This is Kara with Petals and Stems Garden. And today we are bundling sunflowers. It's uh, getting toward the end of July. Uh, so we're gonna do a quick tutorial on how we cut our sunflowers, what we're looking for, how we should do it. Um, also to guarantee that the plants will keep flowering for us. And then we'll come back to our work table here and we will bundle them up in craft paper ready to sell. So let's go into the garden together. So we have about three or four sunflower patches. Um, some we are definitely using to be a little more for the aesthetics of the garden because we do grow right now in a community garden. We also keep them going wild just because for the birds and the bees and all the, the pollinators. And everybody loves to walk into a garden and see 12 and 14 foot tall sunflowers. So, so let's take a look at a few of our different patches first. We haven't bought sunflower seeds in several years. We just gather them at the end of every season. So we're not growing any pure species that we know of. I'm about five foot four, so you can see that these sunflowers are easily 10, 12 feet tall. And they will keep growing. They'll get up to 14 and 16 feet. Fall. and they get pretty unusable at that point. Um, I have to get the ladder out or just say they get to go to the birds and the bees. <laughs> and don't be afraid to let some of them go. You do want to leave some of the flowers on the plants to go to seeds so if you have some seeds for next year. So what we have ended up with in our garden is an array of colors and sizes that are a little unpredictable. but the bees pollinate the flowers either way, which is an important part of our garden. Now, if you notice the petals are fully open and the bees are already pollinating that blossom, the petals will fall off soon after cutting. So they may, that may not be your first choice. So this sunflower is really in the perfect state of bloom uh, to, to arrange and give away in more than a day or two. So what I'm gonna come in to do is first of all, think about the long, the length of the stem I would like. And I'm usually looking for about 18 inches of stem. What I'm also looking for is these growth nodes. And if I want the plant to keep blooming, I wanna make sure that I leave and cut at and above the growth nodes. So as I look into the stem, I'm not seeing any greatly apparent growth nodes. So maybe this plant won't keep reproducing for me, but I do love that blossom. So I'm gonna go ahead and go down about 18 inches from where the blossom is and just cut at the V of, sorry, at the V of the leaf and the stem. And maybe if there is a growth node there I can't see, then the stem, the plant will reproduce. Make sure you cut that at a 45 degree angle for water absorption. Now, I also wanna have uh, some open blossoms for the aesthetics of just giving away a bouquet today. Um, and if that blossom fades a little bit quickly, then I know that I can still have some ready to go to open up in a day or two. So I'm gonna go into this lovely plant here it's got a couple open blossoms. And you can also see that it has a couple buds. So I wanna leave those buds because they will go ahead and open. Looks like I've also cut off of this plant before and that's okay, I can hide that in the arrangement. So I'm gonna go in to the V where the buds are, are leave those and cut, sorry, at a 45 degree angle right there above those bud stems. Boop. All right, so we got two nice blossoms and a couple leaves to work with potentially. And then if we look at the plant, you can see that there are still a couple small buds even below those bigger buds. And actually a few growth nodes that will most likely keep producing some flowers for me later on. So this is a great stem plant to keep cutting from. So 
So I went through the garden and did this a few times, cutting some bud and some open blossoms to keep at the farm stand today. So let's go ahead and pick through those. And we're gonna bundle them up in three decent sized flowers. Um, it's okay if there's a smaller bud or something that creeps in there, but I want three really solid flowers that people can, can feel like they're taking home with them. Now, unfortunately, even if you get some flowers in water right away, they might have the tendency to start to bend and droop. So you wanna make sure that you have a bucket that supports their whole stem. Sometimes the more you gather, the more support there is. But also, um, if you don't have that, then to make sure you get them supported with some other kind of artificial way. Nobody wants a droopy sunflower. So what we wanna do first, of course, is cut off any leaves below about a three quarter way up the stem. And of course, cutting off any leaves that have any major bug, <clears throat> bug presence. So go ahead and do that before you get your paper out. I'm gonna go ahead and do that for a few of these. And that just keeps the foliage from getting in the water. I don't want any foliage in the water. So I'm actually gonna put four blossoms in this particular arrangement. Um, I am leaving one or two buggy leaves, but hey, they're picking up flowers from a farm, so I just think they're nice. And they can cut them off at home, no big deal. So we're gonna go ahead and cut all of those stems to the same length at a 45 degree angle and we'll tie them up. So we went ahead and just tied those up a couple times and you can be more, you can overdo this for sure, not a problem. Really stabilize those stems so they stay long, strong and true and support those heads. Now I just use a, a roll of craft paper from Lowe's because it's super cost effective and I never quite know how much I'm gonna do or need or what the shapes and sizes of my uh, flowers are gonna be. So what I do is I kind of measure the flowers on the diagonal so I know that they're going to have some support at the top. Um, I kind of eyeball it and I just give it a good slice close to the roll. So I usually cut about two or three times the width of the arrangement. And then I just fold that paper approximately in half and I cut out a little semicircle out of the bottom corner. All right. So if you buy pre-cut sleeves, they kind of look like this with a, that little U-shape for the stem. I'm going to open that back up. Go ahead and put my blossoms in that corner so they have some support. And then we just start to roll that up. So that's rolled up, give it a little stapler too. You can tuck it in, make it look real pretty. What I like to look at is then kind of that top view. I don't love that that one sunflower is kind of smushed. Um, I usually try to kind of bundle the petals up so they're protecting the center of the flower. Um, but I kind of tried to do it so that the petals were, were being safe and protected from, uh, from potentially other arrangements it's gonna sit with or people grabbing them out of the bucket. So we try to do this all pretty briskly. Toss them in a bucket. You can see that we've done a few others. And sometimes getting that perfect wrap can be a little bit challenging, but they're gorgeous to look at and people will grab them very quickly. And the bees can keep working on them a little bit. All right, so we're gonna continue to do that. Hopefully we get a nine, nine bundles or so out of this. And then we have obviously lots of other flowers to incorporate in today. So thanks again for joining us today, gathering our sunflowers. It's a real joy to spend the day doing this. Um, and I know that this is one of the number one things that people love to do on a Friday afternoon. It's to just drive by the farm stand and grab a bundle of happy sunflowers for the weekend. So enjoy this. Make sure you spend time in your garden this weekend, rain or shine, and have a good one. Take care.